Okay, uh, Graham Healy back again, and um, what I'm going to do here, I've actually just done up a training program. I know it looks like a big mess when you look at it, but uh, I'm just sort of giving you a little bit of a insight. You'll get a blank form, uh, and this is one that I've used for the transformational challenges. It's what I've used over the years and developed it um, for all sorts of training periodization and you can basically write your own but there's <coughs> I've sort of included everything in this so you can and handwritten it obviously um, and we'll just start with and the thing is I've got to explain um, what all this means and then you can sort of you don't have to put all this writing in obviously but then um, you can diarise your own training uh, schedule. Okay, so where I'd normally start is write what you're training at at the moment. So we've got Monday, as you can see up there. It's Monday, Tuesday, right through to Sunday. And we've got YJD Martial Arts 5 to 6.30 p.m. on Monday with 30 minutes of stretching. Okay, that's Monday. Wednesday, same thing, YJD Martial Arts, 7 to 9 p.m. with 30 minutes of stretching. Okay, now, this is my personal um, training uh, schedule. Uh, and you see on Sunday, um, this is what I actually, I don't do all of it, but this is... I cycle this training okay so I'll just go through it okay bag work um, I can do 15 minutes to 20 minutes of heavy bag work and that's all the you know Healy's Boxing Academy punches and it's all systemized and uh, there's certain combinations that you do 20 reps each side uh, it's quite um, uh, tiring actually a good warm-up in the same procedure so you do it you see when you do bag work you do it two two ways one or even three ways so two ways one is that you may have a day where you're feeling right you're feeling like you know Rocky Balboa or something where you're feeling like uh, you know you got the power of of George Foreman or Mike Tyson and so you really hammer the techniques out. I mean, you put maximum power into it. And that sort of becomes what I call a very high intensity um, workout. Now, other days, like for instance, l yesterday, last sun Sunday, uh, I didn't quite have the energy I did the Sunday before. So I still did bag work for 15 to 20 minutes, usually 15. Sometimes it pushes through to 20 but I did it lighter and faster so when you do it with full power um, it slows down a little bit because you, you're maximizing the power and then sometimes you minimize the power increase the speed so you're doing you know it's 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 still got power but it's more speed power than it is thump power if I, if I could put it that way and then last uh, yesterday I then also worked on just doing power straight lefts and power straight rights so I did uh, you know 20 of those on each side so set up the right boom do a big right hand set up the right bang do a right hand set up the left boom do a big left hand there's a lot of um, there's a lot to understand about you know our boxing system bag work um, and really has to be taught in workshops but I'm just explaining to you here how I go about it right now speed ball um, that's the floor to ceiling ball and I have a special speed ball I did put out a video about this um, there's certain combinations you use on it there's there's certain straps that you use on the speed ball and the speed ball, our sort of speed ball, not the normal speed ball. Normal speed ball's hopeless. They, 
they've got these round straps and that goes all over the place you just can't get a straight line out of it so the normal speed ball um, or our speed ball let's say the Healy's Boxing Academy speed ball has truck straps tying it down so what happens when you hit it it comes straight back at you which is what a normal boxer will do comes straight back at you okay so there's certain combinations you use in the speed ball and again I wouldn't do the heavy bag work and the speed ball on the same workout I'd do the heavy bag work out one week and then I might do the speed ball uh, workout every second week or whatever uh, cycle I decide to put that through so I'm working on power and speed you see I periodize it it's <coughs> excuse me it's a cycle okay rep kicks now <coughs> rep kicks repetition kicks you know your five basic kicks front uh, full turning side back reverse turning uh, if you can do uh, 20 kicks on each leg or 25 maybe 30 sometimes um, of repetition kicks uh, these, these aren't with ankle weights on this is just you're fully warmed up and then okay the uh, workout that you're going to do is repetition kicks that's a separate workout in itself and I'll get back to that later okay ankle weight kicks now when you're using the ankle weights either one kilo or two kilo basically you slow everything down because you've got two kilos hanging off your ankles right you don't go doing high rep kicks you do very slow controlled technique which is making the body get used to having basically weights hanging off the ankles all right so that ankle weight kicks is slow motion and it's designed to get your technique right so you do it in stages you might do for say for instance you might do side kick you bring the knee up and hold it knee up and hold it knee up and hold it then extend do five reps doing that then you do five reps knee up kick out bang hold it knee up kick out bang and hold it you know okay now these top few workouts bag workouts speed rep kicks whatever um, I could use the bag workout or the speed ball workout as a warm-up before I do the Nautilus training okay the rep kick scenario I wouldn't do that first the ankle weight scenario I wouldn't do that first now one I left out here is after say I did bag work 15 minutes of bag work then I'd go to the Nautilus not the Nautilus the um, uh, 500 series stepper so I should maybe I should have put that in here so it should be in here above the Nautilus um, now the step of 20 minutes and uh, it's put on the hard setting so it's like running up a hill so 20 minutes of running up the hill uh, and by the time you finish 20 minutes you've done 15 to 20 bag work then you've done 20 minutes running up the hill on a stepper um, you're well and truly warmed up then what I call the Nautilus weight circuit um, I've got two Nautilus machines one's a lower back machine a torso twist machine but in the weight circuit I do uh, after the uh, 9500 series stepper I then go and do uh, leg curls for 24 reps you know only with 10k but you're trying to build as I've said in the other videos um, you're trying to build enduro strength you're not trying to build absolute strength here so it's it's repetition strength so it's um, there's in that there's basically three sorts of fibers in the muscle you've got fast twitch which is your you know ultimate strength white sort of colored fiber you've got um, endurance fibers and you've got what a fiber in between which they call fog F O G so I'm not I can't remember exactly what that stands for but it's the in-between fiber so what happens in the muscle tissue if you're training yourself for endurance the body adapts to the endurance 
So it, it will reconstruct the muscle fibers to reflect what sort of training you're doing. Now, in Yunjan Do slash martial arts slash boxing, uh, that's all explosive power. So um, there's a little bit of endurance, but because we're on the self-defense end of the continuum, we're doing explosive power training. That's what we're doing. We're not doing 15 rounds in a boxing ring. If you want to relate this to boxing, uh, it would be like doing five rounds. So five rounds is 15 minutes, five threes are 15. Uh, and I no longer keep timing a rounds, I just keep timing a reps when I do the bag work or the speedball work, right? I used to time the rounds in the boxing days, but that's because you're, you're, you're boxing for three minutes or whatever. But in self-defense, you're really not... Three minutes is a long time in self-defense. It should be all over by then. So I just use a rule of thumb that uh, 15 minutes or five rounds is all the time you need in real self-defense. But in the training basics to get there, you know, one to two hours. Now, if your workout's intense, it'll be 45 minutes to an hour because your um, your um, biochemical reserves in the body wear out, burn out. You know? And that's the lactic acid tolerance and all that that I was talking about in the pre-stretch stretching videos and the uh, stretch weight videos or tutorials. Okay, so the Nautilus weight circuit, I'll just describe how I go about the weight circuit for me personally. Okay, 20 minutes on the step machine uh, after I've done the bag work. Sometimes I don't do the bag work. Sometimes I might add in the speed ball instead um, for 15 minutes before I even start the step machine. So the overall objective is I'm doing one big overall workout once a week. And at 67 years of age, that's not too bad, I think. What do you think? <laughs> So anyway, um, after the 20 minute stepper, I then do 24 reps leg curl because kicking and all that's got a lot to do with the hamstrings. So leg curls focus on the hamstrings. So 24 reps at 10K on the machine and uh, full range of motion. And by the time I get to 20, and we finish off the four, 20 to 24, uh, the hamstrings are sort of burning um, from you know, enduro strength stretch training, right? And then after that, I go straight on to uh, stiff-legged deadlifts and I put a couple of fives on the side of an Olympic bar, so that's all up, it's 20, it's, um, sorry, I put a couple of 10s, that's 10, 20, so it's 40K, 40K on the stiff-legged deadlifts and uh, there's a special way you do these, you don't hang you don't hold down the bottom, you breathe in at the top, breathe out as you go down, and you go out and up, that's a rep. You don't go down and, and relax down the bottom, because you don't want to take the... the um, uh, when you partially breathe in to do a stiff-legged deadlift, you hold air in the diaphragm so that it pushes back onto your lower back and it forms like a, like a ball inside your stomach you know in the cavity there so it forms a support ball and pushes back against your uh, spine whereas you breathe out and relax down the bottom um, you're sort of going to put too much pressure on the back of the spine that way and not that you're doing a big huge weights with these it's not it's simply designed to stretch the whole system out so in the, the stiff legged deadlifts obviously you're stretching the hamstrings to their full range of motion and also on the way up all the erector spinae group or your lower back muscles and right through to the torso are all working as well. Then after that uh, I've in incorporated um, and you see this in the stretch the stretch strength video I incorporated uh, sumo squats. Now I've really never ever did sumo squats. I used to just do normal squats uh, with the Olympic weightlifting. We never did sumo squats at all. But because of the hyperbolic stretching and trying to strengthen the adductors and the gracilis muscle, which 
goes from the groin to the inside of the knee, the sumo squats basically emphasize that. So again, it's the same weight that I use for the um, uh, stiff-legged uh, deadlifts and I just do two sets of 12. So stiff-legged stiff dead li deadlift there's two sets of 12, then the sumo squats, two sets of 12. Then from there I go to the Nautilus lower back machine and I do one big set of 24 and the weight stack I've got on uh, 13, uh, you know, number 13, so 13, I think they're about five kilos on each um, of those stacks. So you've got 13 by five, whatever that is, 50, 80 odd K. So I do one big set of 24 reps and the Nautilus machine in particular uh, isolates the lower back erector spina without putting direct pressure on the L1 to 5 lower back vertebrae. So you know when you do squats and all the rest of it and some people say oh deadlift's the best thing for the lower back, well most of those guys don't know what they're talking about because what happens with deadlifts Yes, you know, as soon as you start loading up that bar and you lift it without a belt, especially a lot of them are uh, proclaiming not using belts these days, which is ridiculous. Uh, if you're use, if doing normal uh, deadlifts, you're putting tremendous pressure on L1 to 5, uh, the intervertebral discs. You, it's just a whole lot of weight pressure down on them. But with the Nautilus lower back machine, you specifically train the erector spinae and especially the lower part of the back, no downward pressure. That's the key. We don't need your discs, um, you know, herniating back into the uh, into the um, uh, the nervous system that sits around it, and then you wind up with sciatica problems. So, a lot of the guys that do a lot of heavy um, bar none and I, I know have known and do know like the uh, Australia's Strongest Man and all these sort of guys I know those guys and every single one of them has had herniated discs from doing uh, big power deadlifts and stuff And uh, so it's in my book okay if you're young and you're competing okay that's a risk you take I herniated my lower back with doing like 10 Olympic plates 5 each side deadlift um, and it took me six months to recover from that. Um, but you want to go down that road? You're quite welcome to. Until you'll get, you'll come back to me with the same story, and then you say, "Oh, is it really worth it?" And the answer is, no, it's not. Um, keeping your back lower back, you can do a lot more things to keep your lower back strong than just doing raw deadlifts. You know, and as I say. The problem with the deadlift is the tremendous downward pressure on L1 to 5, and especially the intervertebral disc. You can bugger them up for the rest of your life. Have a look at Ronnie Coleman. He's 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 probably before he was Mr. Olympia six or seven times. Um, I think it was seven times. Um, he he was a powerlifter. Now Ronnie was tremendously strong before he even started bodybuilding, but now he's a, he's an absolute cripple. He's uh, buggered everything up, everything's neck, you know, uh, thoracics, lower back stuffed. And it's all from basically, well, steroids and lifting too many heavy weights. He's just gone over the top and just buggered himself. Good bloke, you know, uh, he, as he says, lightweight, lightweight, but, you know, he should have listened to what he was saying to himself. Okay, so then the next Nautilus machine I go into is a torso twist machine which isolates the um, uh, uh, the both um, obliques, the abdominal obliques. With the abdominals you've got the left and right side, you've got internal external obliques and then you've got the um, uh, uh, the abdominals at the front of the body. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of it. The, uh, abs, the abdominal, rectus abdominals. Uh, so you've got the rectus abdominal in the front and you've got the obliques either side, internal, external. So this Nautilus torso twist machine uh, strengthens the external, internal obliques and the rotisserie muscles around the spine. So 
you're doing the lower back, I go straight onto the nautilus nor nor torso twist machine. Then I put a set of straps on and go to the uh, power, power uh, rack and hang off the power rack and do uh, two sets of 12 of uh, um, uh, well they're abdominal probably uh, hip curls is the best way to describe them so I'm hanging like you know hanging off the the um, power rack with straps hanging straight down and then curl my um, hips up lift your knees up but curl your hips at the same time so I see a lot of the guys in the gym uh, they're hanging off the uh, um, uh, whatever it is sometimes they, they do these ab machines and stuff but they're hanging off there and they're just lifting their knees they're not doing their abs you know I lift the knees 20 times it's just ridiculous so you do two sets of 12 not just lifting your knees but you, you actually lift your hips up with it and curl your hips up that's working the abdominals so Okay, just a quick one again. We'll go through that uh, very quickly. What I do: uh, um, 20 minutes on the Nautilus. Uh, sorry, 20 minutes on the step machine. Then I go to uh, the leg curl machine. One set of 24. Then I go to stiff legged deadlifts. Uh, two sets of 12. Then we do with the same weight. We do two sets of 12 of sumo squats to emphasise the abductors and the uh, gracilis muscles it's the, on the inside of the legs then I go to the nautilus machine lower back machine one set of 24 then over to the um, torso twist machine one set of 12 to the left one set of 12 to the right then over the hanging leg raises for the abdominals and two sets of 12 there okay that's the guts of the weights work out then we go into hyperbolic stretching, which is the one I've added on to the normal workout now. So when we're associating the hyperbolic stretching with the weights workout, uh, we do two like we do lunges, like stretch lunges, and they're what I call they're the pre-stretch. The other video I did pre-stretch stretching. They're the pre-stretch uh, stretching. So we do two sets of 15 in the lunge lunges especially done this way and I'll do a video demonstrating all this uh, in due course so you'll do one set of 15 and then hold it in the stretch position for 10 seconds count to 10 change legs another set of 15 hold it in that position for a count of 10 and then repeat it 15 15 and of course in between the sets you've got to sort of walk around a bit because you really create a burn around all the um, uh, you know the hip flexors. Then you go into side leg stretching, as in the side kick. Uh, two sets of 15 again. Hold it for 10. Other side, uh, a set of 15. Sorry, hold it for 10 and do that two times. So two sets of 15 plus holding it for 10 at the bottom of the stretch, at the end of the 15 reps. Right. So that's hyperbolic stretching, pre-stretch stretching, all in there. Then. I'll put on the two kilo ankle weights, weights uh, go to the, the floor of the gym, put my hands underneath the glute muscles and then do leg splits like that, 30, hold it and do two reps, one, two, hold it, do sort of bounce it twice, then back to the centre, bounce it twice, back to the centre, so 30 reps of that with two kilo weights hanging off your uh, ankles. Uh, uh, you know a 30 second rest and then bang do another set of 30 and then the next thing is uh, uh, just grab the hands into the knees right and resist and then pull the knees apart and then resist them in again pull the knees apart resisting pull the knees apart resisting focusing on the abductors and do a set of 30 and that should sort you out now after that, that's when I would go into the dojo, so to speak, and then I'll go through and still have those um, uh, ankle weights on, and then I'll go through all the kicks. So then I'll do, you know, full turn kick, uh, one set of five, knee up, 
then one, one set of five just executing the kick very slowly because you've got ankle weights on reverse the other side do the same with side kick stage one stage two side kick on the other side stage one stage two then to back kick back kick you've got to do all the way so just slow motion back kick set a ten either side then quite challenging to do the reverse turning kick or the spinning heel kick with a two kilo weight sitting on your ankle you don't do it fast you do it controlled and slow controlled and slow so when you do those 10 reps 10 10 reps it's controlled and slow and when you're doing it that way um, all the support minor muscles and fibers are getting very strong in what I call the static positions like for instance the glute muscle I'll give an example the glute muscles or any muscles got fibers on it and it depends where you're emphasized as to where it builds up so in other words a bit like a callus so if you're emphasizing holding the leg out in a side kick position uh, the glute will build strength in those fibers that have to work in synergy with holding the leg out straight as in a side kick or the front kick or any of the kicks actually so when you're doing the reverse turning kick uh, a lot of emphasis is on the side of the leg so you know basically you've got the glute medius and minimus which sits from the um, uh, the hip or the greater trochanter and then it embeds itself along the side of the hip and also the um, uh, tensor fascia latte up the top up the top of your hip just down from the top of your hip about three finger widths there's the um, uh, the, the tensor fascia latte, so sorry, the the tissue that stretches along the length of the side of the leg or the uh, external side of your leg or the lateral side of your leg is called the uh, TFL, right? So uh, not the TFL, the ITB. I'm getting a bit confused with all the anatomy. The iliotibial band. It sits right along the side and goes right across your knee and joins in the tibia down below your knee but the tensioner the muscle that tensions the ITB is the um, uh, tensor fascia latte which just sits below the edge of your hip the front part of your hip about three finger widths down that's one of it and then your glute muscle and that is actually joined into the back end of the TFL so all these muscles act in synergy and uh, if you get them all working right but with this sort of prescribed training you relieve knee pressure all sorts of things uh, as I said to you in the various other tapes on pre-stretch stretching or the tutorials on pre-stretch stretching and um, um, uh, uh, hyperbolic stretching or strength and stretching as I've called that other one um, you know when you do this sort of training what you're doing is you're naturally resetting all the skeletal system and you're doing what I call um, it's almost got it's it's almost postural alignment on automation and it's self-adjusting chiropractic actually you know a lot of people you know I've done six years med science slash chiropractic at university and you know as I said during these other tapes you know a lot of the people who are, <laughs> who are doing chiropractic uh, they can't even touch their toes so you know here they are trying to uh, treat people with all sorts of issues and they themselves can't even do the required exercises that it takes to be able to be flexible and uh, you know have the strength and flexibility to do all the things we're doing here so you know as I said in the other videos these this sort of training is uh, stuff that you can do for the rest of your life and it will make you um, it'll take away all the aches and pains, uh, you know, in the lower back, uh, in your torso, uh, in, the, in the thoracic area, the hip area, the knee area, the ankle area. Uh, it's like everything. If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. But if you don't have a system to use it, well, that's just the same thing. So, you know, people go to physiotherapists. I've got nothing, well, I'm not a real fan of physiotherapists, actually. Um, 
and not not because they don't have good training they do you know I know a, a few th I, di I did have one good physiotherapist in my gym in Townsville but he had a background in rugby league so he was a sportsman come physiotherapist but generally speaking um, uh, without going into the negatives of physiotherapy except uh, the 20 years I was at one other health centre in Brisbane, Movements Fitness Centre, not every single client that came to me with problems was from a physio. The physios couldn't fix them. The physio was limited in what they were doing and generally speaking the scope of a physio is post-operative recovery in a hospital. I know you go on the internet and they reckon they can do everything these days, but I, I'll dispute that every day of the week uh, because it's out of their scope of training, basically. So, um, you know, they can do a bit of rehab if you had an operation, but, um, you know, depends on the person. When I say it depends on the person, it depends on the education and also it depends on the person's actual sporting background to what they know and don't know that actually works. So because I've had like 50 years of martial arts and boxing training, uh, I come from a sporting background so I can cut through all the theory and say, well hang on, that doesn't work in the real world because I've tried it, right? Okay, now I won't go on in any more on that now. So when you see this, it looks simple but to combine it all together in a overall workout you basically take um, probably speed ball bag work and do the nautilus training then you might do some hyperbolic stretching um, in the background and when like say it'll, it'll take about two hours uh, the first 45 minutes would be high intensity and the second part of that like the last hour or so or the last three quarters of an hour or whatever when you get up to about two uh, you really got to slow down because um, you know you've taken in any intensive workout it only takes about 40 minutes 45 minutes so at the end of that um, you've got your energy levels low so you just wind it down just drop it down so that you're doing moderate training then you know you're going through the kicks maybe slowly and all this sort of stuff um, so you adapt you know if you're going to all out you warm up and just it'll be one hour and that's it you, you it, it that that'll be a high intensity workout but if you do that in the first stage you work out and then you've got other stuff to do like stretching and all this you can wind down the workout and keep the stretching going and that sort of part of it and put a tack another hour on there so you can do all the you know in-depth stretching as I'll do sometimes on the with the straps and all these sort of things okay hope that helps and explains that now let's get back to um, a couple of things I've got up here that I want to show you uh, objectives now without an objective well, I hear a lot of people they they talk about training and then I'll say, well, what's the goal? And they can't tell you. Oh, I just want to do some training. I want to lose weight or whatever. Well, that's not going to get you anywhere. I'll tell you now. After training thousands of people, if you don't set goals with measurable increments, you're not going to achieve anything. Guarantee it. You'll be talking about it for the rest of your life. You'll be like all the old footballers I know, kicking the beer cans around in the... In the um, uh, clubhouse they're talking about how good they used to be and they're, they're all has-beens or same with some boxes and that so I just move this over here and I just want you to have a look at this chart now at one say, stage of the game uh, I was working in with a motivational speaker there for a while and this one chart he came up with and um, it was unreal it's it's a each part of this cycle is four weeks so it's four that's eight that's 12 that's 16 weeks right the first four weeks people get really excited about stuff you know enthusiastic the second four weeks they start to lose um, enthusiasm so it becomes what they call avoidance behavior they start to drop off and the third fourth week they start making excuses oh well I can't make training 
uh, I can't do this, I'm too fat, I'm too old, I'm too whatever. And then the last four weeks is they blame other people. They're not responsible for their own actions. Now this applies in everything. That's the failure cycle. Now, we want to cancel the fail, fail how you cancel the fail, failure cycle is within the first four weeks you set goals and targets so you take them off this downward cycle and you just keep going up right in reality it winds up being like a wave pattern going upwards like a wave pattern going up all right so that's why i put that one there and remember failing to plan is actually planning to fail keep records and diary so I've kept diaries all my life basically, training diaries, personal diaries, one big diary I've got. So everything I do is carefully written down with highlighter pens and like this. So again, if you fail to plan, I guarantee you, you're planning to fail by default. Right. Now, here's, here's what I've done here, I'll just put this up here. So we've got 16 weeks, and I set the target, 25th of April 22, to the grading date, the 13th of August. Now here's the week, 16, 15, 14, blah, 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 all the way down, 12, a countdown. And I'm marking them off as we go. Here we are, we're at week eight as I do this video, right? So the other tip is always diarise your training goals. All right, same thing, F failing to plan is planning to fail. Be specific in those training goals, i.e., if you want to lose 10 kilos of body fat, that's great, you know, I'm going to make a New Year's resolution. You know, big deal. Uh, now, if you do make those sort of resolutions, then you've got to be accountable for it, and then you've actually got to plan it. So what you do then is break it down to weeks and days. Diet, training frequency, and end goals. A lot of the times I'll ask people, you know, someone says, oh, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, blah, blah, blah. And then I say, well, what's the end goal? I can't tell you. It's like just a general miscellaneous in the air thing. So unless you specifically get it into goals, like for instance in the 12 week transformational challenges I used to run with the Bill Phillips um, set up when that all came out, uh, we would have people, do, we would do body fat tests every four weeks. So we'd set the program for people and they'd be training along for four weeks and then we'd do a body fat analysis and they go, oh crikey, they've lost two kilos, three kilos of body fat that would give them the incentive to do the next four weeks and the next four weeks. So we found, and Bill Phillips says this as well, that to change someone's bad habits, it takes 12 to 16 weeks. And they really have to want to do it to start with. Miscellaneous, would-be's if they could be's or a dime a dozen. So when you set your mind to do stuff, you really, unless it's written down, you're never going to do it and unless you set those sub goals you know so as i say here clear objectives equals results so you set the big goal and then you break it down into little parts to and keep this if what i do is set the goals and i put it in front of my desk like i've got here in front of my desk right here is um goal number one is to complete the masters um and I've done the masters in dry needling. Um, make Healy's health a household name. Well, I'm on the way to doing that. And uh, become a master of Yun Jun Do. So, you know, I'm already got my master's certification globally, but, you know, that's relevant to the people who sign that document. But if I get Grandmaster Yun to sign a master's, document so that's another goal but to do that i've got to build up the standard and keep my standard going no matter what happens right okay now down the bottom here is the balance is the key remember in time management you must balance all three aspects of we of well-being mind body and spirit so this is like a bit of a, a wheel of balance it's a balancing wheel 
so I've done this up just for the for this video so you look at okay your career I've got nine out of ten I'm doing what I really want to do mental and spiritual now I'm sort of pretty well got that together no worries physical I've been about eight probably was about a seven seven six months ago but now I'm sitting on an eight my trainings really kicked in family we've had some issues there that I'll leave that as a five you know been through two divorces so that that one sits at a five because of career objectives actually social yeah look you know I'm not an overly social person apart from training and a bit of karaoke so I put about five there financials about six I'm starting to build up there but I want to get that up to nine so you can do this periodically and as I said to you before you set your long-term goals tick and then when you've got them set and you put actually write them down and put them in front of a on your mirror or in front of your office where they look you're looking at them every day and then you adjust them a bit if necessary and then the short-term goals then daily and weekly tasks now before I finish up here here's here's a little tip of what I do it was something at the moment I'm always educating myself right so at the moment I'm studying um, I've got one last medical research subject to do at the end of this year for university but uh, I'm studying a marketing course from the United States and one guy who's very very good uh, Mark um, McGow McGowan I think not McGowan I can't remember his last name but anyway um, Mark's been an executive in a lot of top US companies and uh, he's now focusing on martial arts because he was a martial arts instructor so uh, I've linked in with him and I'm learning I'm going through their education course in marketing at the moment now um, there's a statement and I've got it here somewhere uh, there's a statement that they use and I just want you to think about this you're either a, you're you're either a consumer or you're a creator you're either a consumer or you're a creator so if you're a creator that means you've got to do all this stuff I'm talking about if you're a consumer well you just follow what other people tell you to do no that's okay too you know if you if that's how you're inclined oh you'll do what the trainer tells you to do you'll do what master graham tells you to do or whatever uh, that's fine too because as long as that person that's telling you or advising you or guiding you is in working in your best interest that's no worries but you know if you if you want to be a creator you've got to create the business you've got to create the um, uh, objectives and you've got to create the goals and what I do is each day I you know uh, spend I suppose I'm working on a property so I spend time just thinking about things and then I get objectives and goals sub objectives and goals so I've got the main ones as we've got down here long-term stuff but then I get these interim goals and creative things to do all the time so I never run out of ideas now doing the marketing at the moment is what it was it was a goal that I set a year and a half ago but the course was too expensive at the time and in my spirit said hold hold wait now I linked up a few weeks ago instead of costing six thousand it cost twenty five dollars a week so he'd reduced it to a sign in sign out a contract uh, which was a lot more affordable so and then when I actually signed up for the course uh, he had refined it a hell of a lot better over the last 18 months so there's timing in everything that you do and I'll just leave, I'll finish this up on this apart from all your training and that and setting your goals your goals and everything else must sit right with your own spirit so in other words mind body spirit thing you've got to feel at peace with the goals you're setting there's no point setting someone else's goals or no point someone setting your goals and then you don't you don't feel right about it you're setting your own goals 
and then within yourself you say yes this is what you want to do that helps and unless unless it synergizes with your own spirit let's say you'll never achieve anything that you set out to do now over the years I've set out to, to achieve a lot of education and I, I've achieved that you know so but it hasn't been easy but unless my spirit was settled and I wanted to do it I would have never done it so the best advice I can give everyone to, to, to just finish off this video is when you set these goals be it training goals and all that what we're talking about here it must resonate with your spirit and you must feel at peace with it now if you feel at peace with it you'll achieve it and the other thing the other um, concept uh, I want to give you is that we're all on a timeline whether you whether you are conscious of it or unconscious of it we're on this timeline and you connect with people uh, that are meant to be yeah so you know, I don't want to turn this into a bit bit of a Miyamoto Masashi video but um, this timeline is you become a bit of an observer of your own life timeline and then as you know as, as I said as long as you're feeling uh, at peace with what you're doing and the goals you're setting now why I say that I've always been at peace with the goals I've set but I've in the early stages you know back in my 30s I just drove those goals and ramrodded over everyone with them and that was a mistake and I had to learn by that where now I'll set the goals and then I'll be very careful um, how I let that unfold and everything that unfolds I, it's like I realize I'm not in control of all that that you know I'll back off if necessary I'll hold if necessary but the overall goal once it sits in harmony with your spirit doesn't change uh, well it might change you know if you as you advance to different levels on different things but like for instance as an example uh, you know back when I was 21 I wanted to be a chiropractor that was my goal but those days it's like you know 21 that's 40 years ago 40 45 years ago 46 years ago there weren't any uh, chiropractic uh, educational facilities anywhere in Australia except Melbourne so I had to you know close up shop from Townsville go down to Melbourne with a young family it just wasn't practical so I put that on the back burner then six years ago you know, I went through life you know all that and six years ago I just felt it was the right time to uh, start the, the chiropractic university degree and uh, everyone says oh it's a bit late to do that I said is it? Uh, you know I'm one subject or finishing the uh, six years of medical science so you know I achieved that but the goal original goal that I had was like when I was 21 but you know I'm on the cusp of, of achieving that and a lot of other things I've achieved in the meantime but that goal never went away because it was in my spirit I've always been interested in exercise physiology and all this sort of stuff and I've always been interested in medical um, things and um, a lot of my associates are in uh, medicine and uh, that type of field so okay hope that all helps um, also I'll be putting about putting out the video on um, uh, the inner self um, how to listen to your inner voice um, that one's coming out shortly so that's Graham Healy over and out and have a good day and I hope this um, um, training program overview helps and along with that I'll put I'll post a um, uh, a blank one so that you can fill out your own stuff thank you very much